Hi, Dominique, and welcome to another edition of The Week Ahead. How are you doing? Fine. How are you, Andrew? You're still very summery. <laughs> I mean, it's like, for our American listeners, it's, I mean, it's in like the 50s here in London. It's pretty cold. Mm. Um, but yes, we're, we're I, I, I'm fighting the good fight because it's still early September and I don't want I don't want to put a ski jacket on, but yes, it is. It, it's a bit cooler, but yes, I'm still trying to be quite summery. Um, and how are you doing? Uh, just fine. Thank you. Um, I was very intrigued by the presidential debate. I mean, uh, it seems that uh, the consensus is Harris won, but it's unclear how much of an impact it's going to have on voters. So that we find out over the coming week, basically. Yeah. I mean, I, I have to say, I vote, it's good to get people's views, but I never really understood the idea of like choosing somebody by who's quick or wit or who, you know, uh, I, I don't know, but I, I could be, you know, I could be an outlier on that. Um, but yeah, I mean, and of course, the undecided has got to be such a small, as somebody put it in the chat room I'm in, you know, the undecided is such a small group. It's really which group gets their their base, because not everyone votes, their base fired mm -hmm. up enough. And mm -hmm. then really fired up enough to to ha to create that that, you know, getting people out the votes. I mean, there's you know, th there's so much effort that goes into getting people, older people, very young people. Um and that that definitely feels probably it's more on on the Democrat side now, but you know, yeah, still, Taylor I, Swift, she's moving. Uh, Taylor Swift makes the it looks like she's moving elections as well. I mean, it's a good point. I mean, perhaps Kamal Harris, uh, you know, um, appoints Taylor Swift as replacing uh, Jerome <laughs> Powell. <laughs> Anything is possible. Uh, Anything, I must... yeah. You know, I mean, we're he, going to. He, to he's do. like job done, and you know who better to replace me than than the biggest pop star in the world? And, Indeed. You know, sort of habit, but. Who has greater star power than Powell? I think only one person can Probably play. Probably only her. Yeah, exactly. So okay, so to dive right in, uh, just give everyone a time stamp. It, it's uh, we're doing it a little bit earlier, so it's Thursday, kind of late afternoon London time. Uh, just in case anyone has any questions about uh, market uh, economic data that came out or market movements, but we have pretty interesting past week. So let's kind of dive in what you think is the most interesting, you know, data points, news stories, and obviously market reactions. So Please, besides, no besides the debate and the prospect of uh, Trump, expelling 11 million illegal migrants if he, if he is elected. Right. Uh, probably the, the CPI, but to be honest, uh, the Fed has made clear that uh, at the moment they are not going to look too closely at the inflation, but much more closely at the labor market. So uh, in my books, perhaps the more important data was uh, the unemployment claims. I mean, this was a weak that was a bit quiet for once uh, and so by default uh, and those are not going anywhere you know there is a 4,000 change in initial claims and then you know people get excited but the reality it's a very small change in a series which is fairly noisy uh, you know it continues to show that the labor market at least in terms of unemployment, is roughly where it was in 2019. Oh, yeah. Sorry, there's a bit of a internet issues, but um, I'm just closing some stuff. Yeah. So that yeah, said, after, yeah, after the CPI, the market shaved off. I think they had, what, one third of a 50 basis point, uh, one third chance of a 50 basis point cut. Uh, which, you know, I didn't believe. Uh, and in any event, the right. Fed is, doesn't react to single data points. So I didn't believe it in the first place. And I, 
if it was going to happen, I don't think the CPI would have made that much of a of a difference. Um, so this is. Yeah, a, I guess the, yeah. The, the only market moving thing is something that's if it's around neutral or it's slightly, you know, more inflationary or stronger growth. That that's great. It has to be like pretty bad to really freak out the market um, because the market probably is also um, uh, positioned for that fat tail more than probably you would you would assume is is, is relevant. Yeah. That, that that's kind of the big thing. And now the fat tail looking like that, you know, for big downside is overstated, was overstated. Now we're kind of back to we're back on the we're back on the tracks. We are indeed. Um, shall we talk about next week? Sure, let's do it. Okay, so um, uh, three reasons for 25 next week. Number one, if you look at the uh, SCP and the Fed likes to think in that way, you know, they had a view uh, in June, so they're going to go to the view and compare how things have worked out relative to their view. Uh, there isn't that much of a difference. Uh, inflation is roughly where the Fed wants it to be. My forecast for core PC after this morning, uh, PPI and after the CPI, it's about 20 basis points, which is what the Fed needs to hit its forecast of Q4 on Q4 at 2.8%. So... Um, Inflation is in line, uh, growth a little bit higher, but unemployment is higher. And that's clearly from everything they've been talking about. This is what's catching their uh, attention at the moment. They're all saying that the labor market prospects are good, but uh, you want to be careful not to be too uh, uh, restrictive. So uh, the deviations from their forecast are not that great. Second, they've been talking a lot. Uh, I think 12 out of 17, uh, out of 19 FOFC members, they've been on the roller over the past four to six weeks. Uh, and uh, interestingly enough, they have very different, fairly different views, or at least you have some tales to the distribution of views. So on the one hand, you have the Uber hoax, like uh, the Kansas City Fed president, Schmidt, who says he needs more evidence before he can decide that it's time to cut to his policy. Uh, now, the Fed doesn't have a tradition of dissent. So if he disagrees strongly uh, with the median FOMC view, he's more likely to put his dot as a one cut uh, for this year, rather than a dissent. Um, and then on the other end of the spectrum, you've had uh, Goolsby, who is a Chicago Fed president, who's been on CNBC saying that he's concerned that with every uh, day that passes of a tight Fed policy, we are raising the risk of recession. So Uber Dove. And him, I would peg him at uh, probably four uh, 2024 uh, cuts. Uh, and in between, you have the two and uh, three cuts. And I think, you know, uh, based on what I've read, I think the median is probably going to end up at three cuts. Well, why then? Why why do you think that the market's pricing even outside of that range? Because hope springs eternal. No, I'm joking. Um, the market is traditionally priced, you know, more than the Fed. I guess they've, they've been that way for three years. So exactly. Yeah, fine. Exactly. And also you have the risk of recession, you know, every day that passes um, a new recession uh, scare pops up. Uh, in my view, we are not there, not there yet. Uh, but uh, obviously, there are a lot of people who are more pessimistic than I am on the economy. Uh, yeah. And the, the last reason, so they are going to do, uh, I think they are likely to show three cuts for this year, which is also my best case. And uh, I think there's um, another reason why, you know, they are not likely to front load and which is, 
<clears throat> nimbleness. Uh, a waller had a speech just after the NFP, and everybody was very anxious to uh, hear him because Waller is the guy, he won the debate with Summers on the shape of the beverage curve and whether uh, soft landing was feasible. And uh, he likes to crack jokes. And his first joke was about uh, Simon Biles, you know, that the Fed could not quite hope to be as nimble as she is, but something to uh, aspire to. No, but ser seriously, I think the, the reason is the uncertainty, uh, right. uh, political uncertainty. Uh, if Trump wins and if he goes ahead with deporting 11 million, uh, I mean, you realize that we have a big market reaction when the NFP is off by a few uh, tens of thousands of workers, but imagine if we take out 11 million workers from uh, from the US, it's going to be chaos. Plus, uh, expelling these people uh, could require the federal state to uh, really imp impinge on states' rights. Uh, so I hope sanity will prevail, and even if he's elected, he won't send the army uh, to uh, yeah, the National Guard do I think he's going to be tougher on the border? Yes. Do I think he's going to deport 11 million uh, people who came into the country illegally? Probably not. I mean, logistically, how, you know, and it's an interesting point you said, there's a point of where the federal ha has jurisdiction, the state has jurisdiction. Um, so I think it would be pretty complicated. Um, but generally, uh, tariffs and a much tighter um border policy are both somewhat inflationary. Hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And we're getting a, a taste of that. Uh, I think with the latest NFPs uh, print in the sense that uh, we up to uh, June of this year we've had a combination of a high NFP and rising unemployment, basically because uh, demand was growing strongly, but supply of labor was going even uh, faster. Uh, and we've had fairly mild wage growth. And we saw a reversal of that pattern in uh, August, it's just a month. Plus uh, this month, it turns out the uh, survey week is happening during another hurricane. So God knows what the NFPs are going to show. Um, but uh, so, yes, I mean, having reducing the workforce, I mean, reducing the workforce by about 8% is definitely not good for the US economy. Right. Not good for inflation, not good for growth. Um, so, yeah, so big, yeah, big takeaways for next week. I guess, yeah, the Fed is, is Powell going to, are they going to, is he going to communicate anything different or are there any surprises you anticipate? Any message? I, <clears throat> if, if anything, it could be a bit more hawkish than people expect. Uh, I mean, he will keep to his, we will de decide meeting by meeting based on the totality of the data, blah, blah, blah. But I, I don't see him underwriting the four cuts the market has uh, for the whole of the year. So there is a political uncertainty and there is uncertainty and so the decline in immigration we've seen since the administration uh, closed the border uh, in June. Um, the poor man has enough on his plate not to commit himself to any specific course of action at this stage, especially since after this meeting, the next one is the day after the uh, election. Okay, cool. Any, any other big... Um, I'm guessing that, say, equity markets may take that as, you know, the dollar rallies and, and equity markets may take that as fairly negative, especially considering, you know, him pushing back on four cuts, I don't think it's the same thing as a slightly higher inflation number that shows growth's okay. I, I mean, we'll, we'll see probably, but there is also the point like part of the rally is also based upon that rates, you know, rates are getting cut at a time that growth is okay. So, this should absolutely be a great time to take risk. But if if it if rates are going to get cut a bit slower, it is possible that you know some of some of the um, 
and I guess it still seems like so many people are bearish in equities, but it, it could result in maybe a bit of a sell-off in risk, even if it's just like a one or two day thing. Yeah, so I mean, our own view is that equities are expensive here, so quite vulnerable to uh, a somewhat more hawkish yeah. Fed than, uh, than expected. The other thing that's coming out next week uh, is retail sales. Uh, the so retail sales is a super detailed release, but the part of the release I like to look at is called the control group because that part is what is used to build the estimate of consumption in the national in the GDP data. So the consensus has it at 0.3, which is quite reasonable. It's where we were uh, a month ago. Um, Let's keep in mind that this is mainly restaurant and goods spending. So it's only a subset of consumption and it tends to underestimate consumption uh, because services growth lately has been stronger than goods growth. Right. Um, and it comes out the day before the Fed, not going to impact the Fed because they don't react to uh, single data points. Uh, also, the Fed decision is basically more or less baked in before they come to the FOMC, uh, when Powell has one-on-one -on -one chats with every FOMC member. So won't matter for the Fed, but will give us a chance of uh, how consumption is doing. Okay. Awesome. Any, uh, anything else? Or? Uh, no, I think the, the Fed is, uh, is the lot. main thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Just a quick thing, as we like to do often, just highlighting a few pieces this past week. Um, obviously, you've done some kind of follow-ups on, on CPI review uh, on that. It was, I think it was a great webinar uh, diving into, you know, thoughts around why 25 versus 50 for next week. Also, I think it was very interesting, Bilal, Maybe even more particularly Dal Yen, you know, could Dal Yen get to 120? What's going to take it there? And my personal view is I, I still think we're probably heading in that direction. Um, some interesting things on the equity stuff, uh, carry, you know, it's been it's been a choppy probably last couple of weeks uh, as well. Um, interesting piece in FX, uh, looking into what's happening in, in dollar max. Uh, is there an interesting opportunity there? The you know the news out of there has been super bearish for you know from certainly from the locals <laughs> and from a lot of people. I have a friend that was there recently, but we've had a huge sell off in the currency. And then the question is, does overall in the Mexican economy just so much is uh, you know like a byproduct of how strong the U.S. is? And so, so we'll see, but I think that could be kind of an interesting trade. Um, dive into UK labor market and a bunch of other kind of super interesting stuff. Again, we're in the process of releasing a lot of new tools and analytics, which we recommend for people to, to check out our, our website um, and a lot of AI work, especially on the central bank stuff, which we'll be releasing the next couple of weeks. So on that, I just kind of wish everyone, a, well, a happy Friday, which we rarely say, and then uh, a nice weekend and, and, a, and a fun Fed week uh, next week. Yeah, let's build our forces for the Fed week. Exactly. Okay, cool. awesome.